You know, it's so important right now that we listen to the prophetic word of God, what God is saying. There are key people right now that he's using. One of my dearest friends uh, is uh, the ministry that is linked with Christian International, especially Tom and Jane Hammond. Welcome Jane Hammond here with us for a message. So if you don't mind, I'd like you to stand to your feet and I'm going to pray that the Lord is going to baptize you fresh and anew with the Holy Spirit and with a double portion, a double pay anointing to begin to speak, to begin to prophesy, to begin to decree and to see light shine on your way, to begin to pray in tongues that's going to open up the atmosphere. And so Father, right now, God, I thank you for everybody that's assembled at Glory of Zion and every single person that's watching online. I thank you, Father, that even as on the day of Pentecost, Lord, as Jesus went up, Lord, his mantle came down in the form of the Holy Spirit and it empowered the church to go out and begin to change the world. Lord, Lord, just like in the Old Testament, Elijah went up, his mantle came down, and Lord, Elisha went out and he moved in double portion authority and double portion power. Lord, we're so grateful today, Lord, that what we've received by your Holy Spirit is far greater than Elisha's double portion mantle. But God, we receive today the power of the double pay, double authority, double miracles, double prophetic insight, double accuracy, Father God, so that we can break the way open and we can begin to see this world shift and change in the name of Jesus. And I just hear the Lord say that in this decade, in this season of pay, the Lord is saying, arise, arise, America. Awake, awake, O church. The Lord says, my people begin to cast off even the yoke of weariness, begin to cast off the yoke of, 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 of heaviness. For the Lord says, I've heard your cries for justice, says the Lord. I've heard your prayers for deliverance from the evil choking effects of liberalism, of lockdowns and of limitations. And the Spirit of the Lord says that I declare to you right now that I am arising as a mighty man of war on behalf of my people, on behalf of my church, on behalf of Israel, says the Lord, on behalf of my ecclesia, and on behalf even of this nation, the United States of America. And the Lord says that I'm going to do spiritual battle. I'm going to utilize my ecclesia to break out of the night and to step into the new day. The Lord says, don't you know that even as you've been declaring the new day. Don't you understand that you've got to go through a night to get to the new day? But the Lord says, do not be afraid of the night because I own the night, says the Lord. I own the night and I will use the night to actually destroy your enemies, says the spirit of the Lord. The dawn is, the, the day is dawning, says the Lord. The sun is coming up. I'm going to shine my light. And the Lord just says, sons and daughters, I want you to know that it's a day of courage. It's a day of dunamis. It's a day of power. And that I'm bringing you fully in to seeing my hand and my plan working on your behalf. So the Lord says, quit being a, a, a measuring victory by the daily news cycles. The Lord says, I am up to something that you can't even yet imagine. I am up to something that is going to amaze even your enemies, says the Lord. So the Lord says, sons and daughters, I want you to have the long range view in, in, in mind and understand the enemy has worked overtime to discourage you, to try to bring you into defeat. But the Lord says, I am sitting on my throne. And the Lord says, I have already overthrown the, the throne of Jezebel, says the spirit of God, because my people have prayed, my people have cried out. Now just watch and see how it begins to play out, says the Lord. Your prayer are prevailing. The decrees that are in your mouth over this nation uh, are prevailing, says the Lord. And now my decree is enough is enough, says the Lord. Enough is enough. Enough of the fear. Enough of the foolishness. Enough of your government leaders fraternizing with your enemy and, and fraternizing with plans to destroy the Lord says that I am fanning the flames of the fire of God. And the Lord says that I am going to come to heal, to deliver, to set free, and to restore. And you will see the fear of the Lord fall in this land, says the Lord. And you will begin to see the, 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 the beginnings of awakening. You will begin to see the fires of revival begin to burn. You will begin to see my glory be experienced from the north to the south to the east and the west. So the Lord says, lift up your hands and receive the double portion, the double 
pay anointing, says the Lord. For the Lord says, I'm lighting your mouths on fire. I'm, I'm encouraging you that the miracles are in your mouth. The victory is in your mouth. The breakthrough is in your mouth. So begin to decree it over your cities. Begin to decree it over your churches. Begin to speak it over your nations. And yes, speak it over your families, says the Spirit of the Lord. Because I am here to, to loose angels, to go upon those words and to begin to carry it out, says the Spirit of God. Do not back down. Do not quit. Do not get weary, says the Lord, for your days of fulfillment are at hand. Your time of authority has come. Your super bloom season has arrived. So shake off the weariness and put on your garments of celebration and praise. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen on you, declares the spirit of the living God. Amen. Let's just clap our hands to the Lord. Father, we just thank you so much for your, your people, God, that are activated that are stirred, and Lord, that the power, the victory is in our mouth in this season of the double pay. We decree it now in Jesus' name. Whew, amen. Well, you know, um, last year, as we came into 2020, uh, I had been doing a study of the number 20 in scripture and found that 20 was a reset number. And I think that we all know that 20 was a, 2020 was a reset year. Um, I studied several different 20s in the scripture. The, the story of Deborah after 20 years of harsh bondage and cruelty under the hand of the Canaanites, God gave her a prophetic word that actually liberated the nation and brought them into 40 years of rest. It was a tipping point moment as we are in now. But I believe that the prophetic word is going forth. It is breaking the way open. It is releasing the heavens because understand this, in the days of Deborah, heaven fought for them. And God turned everything around because heaven came in and fought for them. But I also studied the story of reset in the story of Jacob. And Jacob was, um, his mother and father obviously were Isaac and Rebecca. And Rebecca actually went through 20 years of barrenness. 20 years of disappointment, 20 years of feeling like um, her, her self-worth was under attack, 20 years of, uh, of confusion and heartbreak in her life of grief. But after 20 years, God broke her out of barrenness and she became pregnant with not just one baby, but with two babies. Again, a double portion. In, in Deborah's day, 20 years of bondage equaled 40 years of freedom. For Rebecca, 20 years of barrenness equaled two babies in her womb, Esau and Jacob. And we know that both of these guys, they wrestled, they fought from the very time that they were in the womb. Esau came out first. He was the firstborn. Jacob uh, put his heel uh, and grabbed his brother. His name actually means supplanter or heel grabber or deceiver. And we know that that was kind of the setup for the two of them. And and the scripture actually says, God says, I, I, Jacob I love, but Esau I hated. And if you've ever wondered about that, it's because Esau really didn't care about the promise. He didn't care about the inheritance of the land. He didn't care that much about what Abraham had covenanted with God about that was then passed to Isaac. And then Isaac walked out the covenant. And now it was up to his children to walk that covenant out. Esau, he was just he's a good good old boy. Wanted to hunt, wanted to fish, wanted to to do the, the manly things of of just the flesh. But Jacob wanted the land. He wanted the promise. Those were good things, except he did it kind of the wrong way. We know he did. Um, he stole his brother's uh, first firstborn rights, which is again the right of the double portion. He stole his father's blessing. And his mom said, now you have to leave, you have to flee, you have to run away to the house of your uncle Laban. And there in Laban's house, God actually put Jacob, the deceiver, under an even bigger deceiver <laughs> in Laban. Because Laban cheated him, changed his wages. I mean, if you remember the whole story, he worked seven years for Rachel. And the next morning after his wedding night, he found out he'd gotten Leah instead all I can say is he probably had had way too much to drink to not know the difference, but that's a whole nother story. <laughs> then, then he worked longer and it was just like Laban cheated him and cheated him and cheated him. After 20 years in Laban's house, he prospered, he grew family, he expanded, he, 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 he learned, 
and yet he was not fulfilling his destiny. I think there's a lot of people in the body of Christ that have prospered, that have learned, that have grown, and yet they haven't been hitting the core of their destiny. And this is a cycle, a, a cycle season that I believe God's saying, come out of the old and come into the new. God was saying to Jacob, get out of Laban's house, go back and possess your inheritance.